and welcome to In-Depth. I'm Tina Jha. On the 20th of June, the state of Jammu and Kashmir was placed under governor's rule after the BJP withdrew support to its alliance partner, PDP, forcing Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti to resign. This is the eighth spell of a governor ruling the state of Jammu and Kashmir and the fourth such incident under NN Vohra. But why governor's rule and not president's rule in Jammu and Kashmir? In all other states, in the event of failure of constitutional machinery, the president's rule is imposed. But in the case of Jammu and Kashmir, the process is slightly different. What is this difference? Under what provisions does the governor rule Jammu and Kashmir? And what are the powers and role of the governor and lieutenant governor in India? Let's explore in today's In Depth. Debate on the role and need of governors in India is quite old. When the matter of the governor's appointment came up for discussion in the Constituent Assembly, suggestions of their direct election or appointment on behalf of the president were mooted. But in the end, it was decided that as a guardian of the constitution, a person in the state should be appointed as the governor to work as a bridge between the centre and the state government. Democracy is a system of government in which citizens have the power to choose representatives from among themselves to form a governing body. So when people discuss the operational powers of governor or lieutenant governor in a democratic system, then their positions are not considered to wield much authority since they are not elected by the people. When the matter was raised in the Constituent Assembly, it was said that the position of governor is not required in a democracy. However, it was deemed important in situations of constitutional crisis and for bridging the gap between centre and the states. All seven union territories in India, including Pondicherry, they are to be administered by President of India. 239 says, every union territory shall be administered by the President of India through an administrator called the Lieutenant Governor. So position is very clear. This is the territory of President of India and he administers it through Lieutenant Governor. And Lieutenant Governor is administrator. He is not a figurehead. He is not a constitutional head, like governors of states. In a federal system, the governor of a state is the ceremonial head of the state executive and has the right to be kept informed of the decisions of the state ministry. But critics allege that the position of a governor is that of an agent of the center, especially during political upheaval or when there is tussle between the center and states. In union territories like Delhi, where Lieutenant Governor is the constitutional head, the power tussle over the rights of the elected government and the Lieutenant Governor becomes even more critical. A governor's post is considered ceremonial, and governors are appointed basically for political maneuverability. They invariably represent the centre. At times, there have been allegations of misuse of governor's position by the centre, either to form or dissolve state governments. However, this is not entirely true. According to the constitution, a governor's authority is more than ceremonial. Governor and lieutenant governor play pivotal roles in implementing constitutional provisions and also monitor the functioning of the state government. The primary function of the governor is to preserve, protect and defend the constitution. When a governor takes over the administration of a state, he appoints advices. Senior officers are normally appointed as advices uh, and he runs the administration with the help of these advices. The Sarkaria Commission was set up in 1983 by the government to strengthen governor's role. The main aim of the commission was to examine the relationship and balance of power between centre and states and also suggest changes within the framework of the constitution. The commission recommended status quo in the centre-state relationship, especially in the areas relating to legislative matters, role of governors and use of Article 356. It also recommended appointment of non-political eminent personalities as governors. The person should be appointed in consultation with the Chief Minister, Vice President and Lok Sabha Speaker. During a discussion in the Constituent Assembly on the need for the governor's position in a federal democracy, it was argued that governor would work as a bridge between the centre and the state government. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Following the imposition of governor's rule in Jammu and Kashmir, 
the state legislative assembly remains in a suspended animation. According to the constitution, governor's rule in Jammu and Kashmir is imposed for a period of six months. During this period, the governor may also dissolve the assembly. In all states of India except Jammu and Kashmir, the government's failure results in President's rule. President's rule refers to the suspension of state government and imposition of direct central government rule in a state under Article 356 of the Constitution. But Jammu and Kashmir has its own separate constitution that provides for an intermediary statutory layer in the state. As per Article 92 of the Jammu and Kashmir Constitution, Governor's rule is imposed in the state for a period of six months. The state assembly remains under suspended animation during this period. The governor may also dissolve the assembly. If it is not possible to restore the state machinery before the expiry of the six-month period, the provision is extended. The president's uh, approval is just a mere formality. The governor's rule in JNK is uh, defined by the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir. And let me correct some people that it's not president's rule in JNK, it is governor's rule. Uh, defined by the Jammu Kashmir constitution and it's the only period where you can have a six-month governor's rule. The state of Jammu and Kashmir has been granted special status under Article 370 of the constitution. Under the article, the jurisdiction of parliament and the union government extends over limited matters with respect to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. It is the only state in India which has its own constitution that was adopted on the 17th of November 1956 and came into force on 26 January 1957. See, under the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir, you know that Jammu and Kashmir has a separate constitution. Under Article 92 of that constitution, um, there can be a governor's rule. Governor's rule, I think, uh, is a temporary kind of uh, arrangement. Uh, where the governor can take over the administration when there is a constitution, then when there is a breakdown of the constitutional machinery. Clause 2 of Section 26 of the Jammu and Kashmir Constitution states that the executive power of the state shall be vested in the governor and shall be exercised by him either directly or through officers subordinate to him in accordance with the constitution. Section 46 of the Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir provides that the legislature for the state shall consist of the governor and two houses to be known as the Legislative Assembly and the Legislative Council. Section 92 of the Jammu and Kashmir Constitution provides for governor's rule in the state in the event of failure of the constitutional machinery. Governor's rule can be imposed in the state for six months. During this period, the governor enjoys additional powers, including the authority to legislate. After the expiry of six months, Article 356 will come into force, paving way for President's rule. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The governor occupies a constitutional post. He is not just the ceremonial head of the state, but his work is to ensure smooth functioning in the state. Let's take a look at the role of governors in India in our next report. Jammu and Kashmir has come under the governor's rule for the eighth time in 40 years. The Constitution of India grants special status to Jammu and Kashmir among Indian states and it is the only state in India to have a separate constitution. However, in case of a constitutional crisis, the role of the governor in Jammu and Kashmir is the same as the rest of the states. The constitution gives the governor a wide variety of privileges, proving that the governor's post is not just ceremonial. According to the constitution, a governor can be appointed for more than one state. See, so far as special powers are concerned, the governor has the power to appoint the chief minister. And that is the only occasion when the governor doesn't have to act on the advice of the council of ministers, because there is no council of ministers. So he will be acting on his own. Uh, but of course, there are certain conventions which he has to follow uh, for appointing the chief minister and other ministries. As per Article 164.1 of the Constitution, the governor has the power to appoint the chief minister. As per Article 165, the governor appoints the state advocate general, chairman of the Public Service Commission and other members. According to Article 243, the governor has the authority to appoint the election commissioner and finance commissioner of the state. 
According to the Indian constitution, the decision of the governor is final and the validity of anything done by him as a matter of his discretion cannot be questioned. The constitution also gives governor the authority to recommend president's rule under article 356 of the constitution. Samvidhan governor ko puri powers deta hai kisi ko bhi chief minister niyukt karne ki. Lekin governor se ye apeksha ki jati hai ki wo aise vyakti ko niyukt karenge jo unki rai mein unke judgment mein sadan ke bahumat ka samarthan pa sakne ki sthiti mein ho. लेकिन ये गवर्नर के अपने डिस्क्रिशन में उनके अपने सेटिस्फेक्शन पर निर्भर करता है तो और उसको चैलेंज नहीं किया जा सकता जहाँ तक बहुमत का सवाल है कि किसके साथ बहुमत है वो निर्णय केवल विधानसभा में ऑन द फ्लोर ऑफ द हाउस ही लिया जा, जा सकता है और कहीं नहीं as per article 174 the governor has the authority to convene and dissolve the state legislature according to article 200 no bill in the state can be passed without the governor's assent the governor can withhold his assent or can reserve the bill for the consideration of the president the governor can use his constitutional powers to exercise his discretion to take a decision bureau report rajya sabha tv India is a country that has both states and union territories. Unlike states which have their own governments, union territories are ruled directly by the union government. The governors and lieutenant governors or administrators of the states and union territories have similar powers and functions at the state levels as that of the president of India at union level. But national capital Delhi operates somewhat differently from the other union territories. Article 1 of the Constitution states that India shall be a union of states. The territory of India shall consist of the territories of the states, the union territories and any territory that may be acquired. During the British rule, India was centrally ruled by one government. The rule was called Crown Rule in India or Direct Rule in India. But the makers of the Constitution of India decided to make dual or two sets of government, the national and state governments. Under Part 6 of the Indian Constitution, a system of uniform structure has been given for the state governments. Part 6 of the Constitution also sets out the role of the governor. However, the expression state does not include Jammu and Kashmir. Normally, if there is a breakdown of the constitutional machinery in the states, the president intervenes uh, under Article 356. Uh, the president takes over the administration of a state. But here, it is the governor who takes over the administration of the state. It's a temporary kind of arrangement which will last for six, six, six months. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, the governor can try for uh, another government um, uh, through some permutations, combinations, try another government or maybe uh, there can be elections. Article 153 of the constitution says that there shall be a governor for each state. One person can be appointed as governor for two or more states. The governor actually acts as a representative of the central government and ensures that the state is running smoothly as per the constitution. In this way, the governor plays a double role, one as the constitutional head of the state and second as the representative of the central government. Article 154 vests the executive power of the state in the governor. Article 155 says that the governor shall be appointed by the president. Article 156 provides that the governor shall hold office during the pleasure of the president. The term of the governor is prescribed as five years. Article 157 of the constitution deals with the qualification for appointment as governor. Under this, the person appointed as a governor must be a citizen of India and should be at least 35 years of age. Article 158 of the constitution states, the governor must not be a member of either house of parliament or a house of the state legislature. The governor must not hold any office of profit. However, in a parliamentary system, the actual power lies with the Council of Ministers with the Chief Minister at the head. But in case of hung assembly or political instability, governor plays an important role. The constitution has given the governor special discretionary power which he can use in this situation. Union territories were those territories which could not become state because their area was very small and resources were very limited. 
so the constitutional assembly said okay let these territories be given to the union central government ko de do so these territories were assigned to the central government ke you run them therefore these territories belong to the central government this this position should be very clear whether it is pondicherry or lakshdweep or andaman de kumar or delhi or chandigarh they are the territories of the union they are run by the people who are working in the union of india all employees working in delhi or pondicherry they are employees willy nilly of the union of india on the other hand article 8 of the indian constitution deals with the administration of the union territories article 239 to 241 mentions the provisions on the subjects unlike states which have their own governments union territories are ruled directly by the union government hence the name union territory there is no uniform system of administration in uts as parliament has the power to prescribe the structure of administration under article 239 one of the constitution each union territory will be administered by the president for this the president appoints an administrator or lieutenant governor for each territory the rights and duties of administrators are determined by the president at present there are seven union territories in the country out of which national capital territory of delhi puducherry and andaman and nicobar islands are governed by the lieutenant governor and chandigarh daman and diu dadar and nagar haveli and lakshadweep are governed by the administrator appointed by the president article 2392 of the constitution the president may appoint the governor of a state as the administrator of an adjoining union territory and where a governor is so appointed he shall exercise his functions as such administrator independently of his council of ministers bureau report rajasabha television so how are the positions and powers of governor administrator and the lieutenant governor different from each other let's take a look at this report to understand their roles All the union territories in India fall in the same category but have different administrative systems. In union territories of Delhi and Puducherry, legislative assemblies were constituted in 1962 and 1963 respectively, and the chief ministers were made the head of the cabinet of ministers. In 1991, Delhi was granted special status through the 69th constitutional amendment by the parliament and was named as the national capital territory of Delhi. Delhi is not a full state, but being the national capital, special provisions have been made under section article 230 9 AA of the constitution in delhi the lieutenant governor is the head of the executive but it is not necessary for him or her to follow the advice of the council of ministers the delhi assembly has the right to legislate on matters in the state list and concurrent list however it cannot make laws on issues pertaining to law and order and land making the position of the lieutenant governor crucial and also leading to a partisan between the elected state government and the lieutenant governor such partisan is not visible in puducherry as its legislative assembly is empowered to legislate on these issues as well lieutenant governor uh, so far as delhi is concerned he is the administrator of delhi Now, as for the uh, decision of the High Court of Delhi, uh, Lieutenant Governor, every power is vested in the Lieutenant Governor. He is really the administrator. He is the government, uh, and uh, the uh, elect elected government um, uh, does not enjoy at the moment does not enjoy any powers. All the powers are enjoyed by the Lieutenant Governor. There are some fundamental differences between the powers of the governors, administrators, and Lieutenant Governors in rest of the states. Lieutenant Governor of a Union Territory does not enjoy the same powers as that of the Governor of a state and is more like a representative of the center. In Union Territories that have legislative assemblies, the president appoints the chief ministers and not the lieutenant governors. The role of the lieutenant governor is to administer the oath to the chief minister. See the position of lieutenant governor is entirely different than that of a governor in a state. In Delhi the lieutenant governor is the administrator he exercises both the functions executive as well as he is the constitutional head whereas a governor is only a constitutional head here in delhi because lg is the executive head he looks through all the files everything has got to be approved by the lieutenant governor so lieutenant governor of delhi is much much more powerful than a governor of a state who is merely a constitutional figurehead
In the states that do not have their own legislatures, the administration is run by the president through his or her representatives. Article 240 of the Constitution enables the president to make rules and regulations for peace, progress and good governance of the territories of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep, Dadara and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. In 1966, Chandigarh got the status of the Union Territory and with it, a position of Chief Commissioner was created as the Administrator of Chandigarh. The senior most IAS officer was appointed as the Chief Commissioner. However, on 1st June 1984, the Governor of Punjab was given the additional responsibility of the Administrator of the Union Territory of Chandigarh and the tradition continues even today. The role of the Chief Commissioner was changed to that of an advisor to the new Administrator. K. Banerjee was the last Chief Commissioner of Chandigarh. However, there is a growing demand of a separate administrator for the Union Territory of Chandigarh. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's it from us in this edition of In-Depth. You can also watch our episodes online on YouTube and Twitter and share your valuable feedback. Thanks for your time.